Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Lily Dale Radio, and the name of the show is called Embracing Your Essence. And I am Colleen Vanderzyden, the host of today's show. And today we are going to be talking about the uh, power of choice and how we can use that to move out of feeling stuck or that we can't do something. So as you are joining in, please do say hello. Let me know where you're from and what's going on there so I can see what's happening in my world and making sure also that my tech is working because you know how things are lately. You just never know if they're going to be working. So as I said, we are going to be talking about the power of choice. But before I get to that, I'll give you some details of things. I am, as I said, Colleen Vanderzyden. I'm a registered medium here at Lilydale Assembly. I'm also a certified intuitive life coach and a certified spiritual life coach. And that is one of my passion is to help people become their best selves. And that's what we do every week on this show is I give you some ideas, some thoughts, something that you can take into consideration to help you become the best version of you. So please do say hello as you are joining in and that would be wonderful and I can make sure everything is working as it should. Uh, let's see. So you can connect with Lilydale Assembly at lilydaleassembly.org is the official Lilydale website. Lilydale Assembly Incorporated is the official Facebook page. And on both of those, you can find out what's going on in Lilydale and all of that. And my page is colleenvanderzyden.com. That is my website. And my official uh, Facebook page, Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach. Okay, now I'm just going to check the comments, make sure things are working. Yes, they are. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Teresa. Thank you for joining and saying hello. So we are going to be talking about, hi, Karen and Pamela. Uh, we are going to be talking tonight about the power of choice. But before I get to that, I do want to mention if you have questions, as usual, please do ask them in the feed. I can see them here on my page. You do have to be on my page, Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach, in order for me to see them and answer them live. If you're on a different group or a different page, I will answer them your questions after the show is over. So then you can see everything there. And <laughs> let's see. Hi, Kelly. Yes, snow in Lilydale. We woke up to snow this morning, everybody in Lilydale could not believe it. Uh, it was amazing. Hi, Kathy and Cynthia and Guy. Nice to see you all. Thank you for joining me tonight. I do want to mention my Courageously You small group coaching program because that's coming up in January. Um, and it is limited to eight people. And we, uh, it's all to help the people become their best selves. Also, it gives you strategies so that you know how to move forward in some of the uncertainties and strange things that are happening in the world today. Uh, not just those things around us, but also the things within our lives as well that we want to have some strategies so we can handle them. We do want to become happier. That's the whole point, is we want to have more joy in our lives. And so that's going to be opening up now. You can register now. The program itself starts January 12th. And if you go to my website, Colleen Van Vanderzyden.com. Click on the link at the top. You'll get more information about that. It's really a transformative program. It's really quite amazing. Uh, let's see. Hi, Judy. Nice to see you. And hi, Lindsay and Jeanette. Thank you for joining us today. So tonight, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about the power of choice. So have you ever felt like you don't have a choice. You have to go to work at a job that you hate. You have to help your mother or a friend with something in particular with their needs. Uh, you have to stay in your marriage because of the kids or money or insurance. Or maybe you think that you can't. You can't be happier. You can't have more money. You can't change jobs. You can't end your marriage. You can't find a partner. The list of can'ts can be endless. You don't feel like you can make certain choices or live the way you want because things are blocking you, right? Something is stopping you. You can't or you have to, whatever it might be. So many of us were brought up in such a way that our power of choice was taken away or minimized. So what we're going to do tonight is we are going to talk about some ideas to help you reclaim that power of choice, but also help you see what might be blocking you and how you can shift those things as well. And we'll go over some ideas, some thoughts for you that will be helpful. So we have been brought up, so many of us, and I've, I'm just going to mention this so you can understand why your power of choice seems to have kind of minimized or maybe even totally disappeared. As kids, some just some examples. As kids, we were told to stop crying. Remember this? Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Some of you may have heard that. We learned that expressing our emotions was bad. We shouldn't express those emotions. So we started to hide how we truly felt. 
we couldn't express ourselves. We may have been told something like money doesn't grow on trees, and we learned that money is limited. And this became a belief that we can't have money, and we probably never will. We may have been told to be nice. I heard, um, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, which became a belief that we can't share our opinions, our thoughts, uh, because it might upset other people. So societal and cultural expectations were impressed upon us, and we learned we had to do whatever it took to fit in and belong. And that meant we had to meet other people's expectations and be who we were told to be and live in a way that makes other people happy. We listened to others over ourselves trying to please them. Do you remember? Do you have some of these experiences as well where you thought of these things? This programming makes it hard for us to know who we really are so we could choose to live as we wanted to. So because of all this programming and conditioning, we lost some of our power. We didn't know if we could live differently. So rather than choosing to be courageous and authentic, we made the unaware choice to hide and be safe. We didn't know we were doing this. It just happened. So this programming formed the foundation of unaware beliefs that have been affecting us our whole lives. Now we've got that part. Now we add on top of it the uncontrollable life challenges, the things that happen that we don't really have control over. You know, we get fired from a job, we might get divorced, somebody has died, we might have natural disasters where we've lost everything as some of our friends have down south. We want a certain job, but we don't get it. So there's so much in life that seems so out of our control. So we have this societal expectation of how we're supposed to be, who we're supposed to be, that is, has influenced us throughout our lives. And so we feel a little bit like we don't understand ourselves enough to know what choices we want to make. And then we add in there the uncontrollable things that happen to us that interfere and we feel like life is so out of control and we feel powerless and it really seems like we can't make a difference in how we live our lives. So we're going to talk today about how you can reclaim that power and live the life you want to live. You can change your mind at any time and sometimes we don't think we can, right? We think our mind just does what it does, but we actually have some control over that and we can make different choices on what our mind focuses on. So we can change our mind at any time. Just because something has always been this way doesn't mean it has to stay this way. We make choices all the time. Research says we make 35,000 choices and decisions a day. I could not believe that when I looked it up. 35,000. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about power of choice. Obviously, we're not going to be intentional about 35,000 choices. So we are going to figure out some ways to narrow it down to what's most important to you and what you want to do with your life. So obviously, many of these 35,000 choices are made uh, out of habit and without intentional awareness. You know, we choose when we get up in the morning and, and, and we don't sit there and go, okay, should I get up now or should I get up two minutes from now? Now, sometimes we do if we don't want to go to work or something. Uh, sometimes, you know, we choose what we want to wear. We choose what we're going to eat. We choose when we're going to get the mail. We choose when we're going to clean the house. These decisions are made on autopilot and really without awareness. And for those more mundane events, that is fine, okay? I do not want you like thinking about every single choice you're making. But what if your life isn't what you want it to be? What if you want more out of life? I can't tell you how many times I heard that this summer, this past summer from many of my clients that they just wanted more. They may not have known what more they wanted exactly, but they knew there was something missing and they needed more. So what if you want more? What if you want to be happier? We all say we want to be happier, but then sometimes, no matter how hard we try at it, it doesn't work or things happen and we make our happiness conditional upon having perfect external circumstances. What if you have a big dream and it hasn't happened yet? The power of choice is profound and life changing. And when we live intentionally, we are empowered and we're limitless. 
choice, making choice is a foundation for our spiritual and personal growth. We have to make a choice to move in those directions. If that's what's interesting for us, we have to make the choice to move in that direction. We all have free will. We always say this, we have free will, we have free will, but what does that mean? What does it really mean? It means you can create whatever you want. It means you have the ability to make choices and create anything you want. What usually stops us from this limitless thinking, really, is something in our own heads, right? We have thoughts in there that get in our way, beliefs that get in our way, fears that get in our way. And as we become more aware of those, we can let those go so we can really embrace this power of choice and move into that limitless thinking. When you decide what is most important to you, obviously 35,000 choices are not all most important. So 35,000 choices, we set that aside for a second. But when you decide what is most important to you, you'll prioritize your choices to help you move in the direction you want to go. You become intentional and mindful. That's when you'll create the limitless life, the limitless joy, the limitless abundance, opportunity, purpose, meaning, anything you want. Now living in this physical existence, it's very easy to feel limited and stuck. Where we believe things are impossible, that we can't have what we want, that we can't create things, that we can't do certain things, or that we have to do something for other people where we put our own needs on the back burner so that we can fit in and belong and feel safe. But we don't have to stay this way. We can change this. We don't have to stay stuck feeling disempowered or limited. We can change our lives. And when we truly believe that life is limitless, tr we can create whatever we want. We can create miracles, whatever you want to have. And I'm going to just check the comments and see how we're all doing here. This is good. And as usual, if you are just joining in, I'm Colleen Vanderzyden. And if you have questions or comments, feel free to put them in the feed so I can see them. And especially if you have questions as I get going, because I'm going to talk about some ideas now that you can use to help guide you as you're moving forward so that you can really harness this power of choice to create the life you want to have so you don't get stuck in something. Okay, so the first step to embracing the power of choice is to recognize that you and your life can change. There are some people who believe that they are the way they are and they will never change. There are some people who believe that life is the way it is and it will never change or get better. Others believe that they can learn and grow, that they can evolve and to become that best version of themselves, like I always like to talk about. And that they also believe that even though life can get difficult and there might be challenges, they believe it can also change for the better. So this is the difference between what we call a fixed mindset, where we believe we cannot improve, where life can't get better, that we ourselves are just the way we are, and that's it is, and a growth mindset, where we believe that if we open our minds up, we can have new perspectives, we can learn different ways of living, we can be different people, we can experience a different life. The fixed mindset tends to be kind of hopeless in a way because it means that you're not going to grow or improve or learn. But the growth mindset is really one of hope. It helps us see that there is something better and that we can have a better life. So the first step here is to decide if you can open your mind up to the idea that you can have more, that you're not stuck, that you're not limited. Can you open your mind up to the idea that you can be more, that you can choose to believe that you can have the life you want? Can you choose that? When we do this, we choose to let go of the belief that we can't. We can change our mind and believe we can. And as I said, sometimes life is hard and life makes us at times feel very limited. We might re work really hard on a project or try to do something or achieve something and it doesn't work. And so we think, well, we just can't, it's just not going to work. But maybe we just need to open our mind up to a new way of trying to get there or something that's even better than what we were trying to work toward. 
So we want to open our mind up to the idea that we can move into this limitless thinking, that we are truly limitless beings who have free will and can create whatever we want. And we do that through the power of choice. The second step to using the power of choice is to increase the awareness of your choices. There are times when we're making us making choices that keep us stuck in pain or suffering. And I'm going to tell you a little story. And this story is actually in the first chapter of my book. And so the first chapter of my book, the I have a magical mind game in there that's called I Choose. And you can actually download that for free. I have the link right in the description of today's show, right at the very top. And you can download it there because I'm going to talk about this story that's in the first chapter and how I use that magical mind game I Choose to change what was happening in my life. So what was happening at that time is I was at the end of a relationship. This relationship had ended. And you know how when something ends and it's, you know, it's kind of messy and and you can get stuck in uh, worrying about things. And I was stuck in complaining about what I was going to do next, how things were going to work, complaining about what had happened or what should have happened. I got stuck worrying about the possible consequences of the end of this relationship. And then I got stuck in blaming the other person. You know how it is when something happens and we get stuck in that loop and our thoughts just go round and round and round and we worry. This... This can happen for anything, not just a relationship, obviously. Anything that's in your life that is not working the way you want it to. You may have noticed that your mind gets stuck in these loops of negative thinking where we're worrying or complaining, we're catastrophizing, whatever it could be. And when we worry and we complain, we're not being intentional with our words, our thoughts, or our choices. We're just stuck in that loop. It's totally mindless. And when I became aware that I was stuck in this powerless worry loop and I felt badly enough that I wanted to change it, that's what I needed. I needed to recognize that I didn't like how I was feeling and that I needed to do something about it. So when I became aware of this, it was because I didn't feel good and I wanted to feel better. So I, rem I remembered and worked with my magical mind game, I choose. So I interrupted my pattern of worry and thinking. And what this is, is we use... I choose to describe how we're feeling, what we're thinking with some variation of the words I choose. And so that's what I did. So I said to myself, I'm choosing to be angry. I'm choosing to be upset. I'm choosing to be worried. And I know somebody out there just went, but I really feel like this. And that's good. Yes, you are feeling like this. And that is excellent. And you want to feel the emotions. But when you get stuck there and you get stuck in that downward spiral, that worry loop, that's where we need to break the pattern. Okay, so you can think clearly and process the emotions and move forward. So I was choosing, I kept saying, I'm choosing to blame. I'm choosing to complain. I'm choosing to let my worries overwhelm me. I'm choosing to focus on potential bad things that might happen. And when I use the I choose, what happens is I'm reclaiming my self-responsibility. I'm recognizing that at some level, I am choosing how I'm feeling. I'm choosing where my thoughts are going. I'm choosing how I respond to the situation. I'm choosing to allow my fear to become my focal point. So even though it wasn't conscious or intentional, that's what was happening in my head. And that's what happens in so many of our heads when we're stuck in something that has happened. So when I said this, I reclaim my self-responsibility, and I'm also recognizing that as myself being responsible, I'm the only one that can make me feel better. I'm the only one who is creating my life. I'm the only one who's going to break this pattern and get myself back into feeling empowered. So then, with this self-responsibility, I can see that on some level, I have chosen to complain and worry, and I don't have to stay there. The power of our mind is amazing. The power of choice and being intentional in choices can make a huge difference. So saying I choose helps me change my story, breaking my powerless habit of complaining and worrying. I'm back in my power. I'm no longer stuck feeling helpless or worried or scared, whatever it can be. And then I can process the emotions and decide how I want to move forward. When you aren't living the life you want. If you're feeling stuck, you're feeling stuck in the can'ts or have to's, pay attention to what's going on in your head, how your worries, your complaints, if you're blaming, and then try this I Choose Magical Mind Game to break your habit. 
when we acknowledge this power of choice, we are actually becoming intentional. Okay, When we're stuck in that worry loop, we are not intentional. It's just happening. When we become aware of it, then we can break that pattern by being intentional and recognizing this. We become aware of our habits and patterns and our ability to change them and break them. We're reclaiming that self-responsibility. Now, there is more to the magical mind game I choose and you can read about it, the rest of it in my book Courageously You chapter one you can download it for free the link is above and just um, wait a couple seconds for the pop-up to come in so you can sign up for it and then just make sure you look for the return email could be in case it gets stuck in your spam junk or promo folders so make sure you look for it there but there's more to it but um, I have other things to talk about, so I'm not going to go more into that. But even that simple part I just told you will help you get back into intentionality um, and and recognize that you do have the power uh, to change how you're perceiving your life. You have, you are responsible for how you're feeling. And this doesn't mean, and sometimes when I say things like this, somebody gets upset about it. Um, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't feel what you feel. You always need to feel what you feel. It's when you get stuck that I'm talking about. I don't want you to get stuck. Okay, so when you notice you're stuck and you'll notice it because you'll be feeling worse and worse and worse, that means you're stuck. Then you can use this I choose and move forward. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is what led me to my awareness that I was complaining was that I felt badly. I was like pain and suffering are a great motivator for us to create change to make different choices lots of times we wait for somebody else to do something before we feel better but we don't have to do that we can make a different choice right away and so when this pain and suffering gets us to the point where we decide we have to do something we have to make a different choice we finally get tired of the pain so if you're unhappy or dissatisfied not living the life you want not getting your dreams the things aren't happening that you want um, your goals aren't there what you want to do is pay attention to your words awareness of our words will help you discover where you're complaining your fears your worries and of course I can't is a big one we usually say I can't whatever and then follow it with some kind of an excuse and this is excuse blocks us from seeing a different path okay so some examples for you I can't be myself because other people won't like me I can't be myself because other people will be upset okay if you don't speak your truth because you know it's going to upset somebody else you're not being yourself so you can't be yourself we might say I can't change jobs we talk ourselves out of the risk um, I can't change my job because I'm not going to get enough money um, I can't change my job because it's going to be too hard to move into a whole new situation uh, I can't move into a new job because I don't have all the skills and I'll have to learn new things and I'm old and it's hard to learn new things these are all forms of fear uh, I can't find a partner because all the good ones are taken many of us have said that one right all the good ones are taken or else we go I can't find a partner because it's not worth the trouble so being responsible and recognizing that we do have this power of choice to look at our lives differently to respond to our situations differently to create our dreams we ask ourselves a question what can we do ourselves to feel better maybe we can learn some what can we do so our words will actually lead us to where we feel helpless scared or fearful and your words reflect beliefs that have kept you limited and stuck okay okay I can't find a partner because all the good ones are taken is limiting I've limited myself okay so you can change your mind you can change your words you can make a different choice so when you become intentional with the choice of your words you can change them and get unstuck one of my favorite magical mind games and the reason I call them magical mind games in my book is because you know how our mind we have mind games where we feel like we're tricked and things you know somebody's playing tricks in our heads or something magical mind games is where we use the power of our mind to create magic in our lives and that's why I call them magical mind games so one of my other magical mind games is changing I can't to I won't this is one of my favorite ones because I can't is helpless and powerless when you think about I can't what do you think about right oh I can't right but I won't I won't is in your power I won't means you're choosing not to 
You're using your power. You change I can't to I won't. So I can't be myself becomes I won't be myself. That means I'm choosing not to be myself. When you become aware that you're choosing not to be yourself, then you can decide what to do with it. You can then decide if not being yourself is empowering or disempowering. Is it a good, in quotes, choice for you or a bad, in quotes, choice for you? Is it what you want? Is it you expressing your truth? And then you can decide what to do next. I can't, I can't change jobs becomes I won't change jobs. Is that really what you want? You can ask yourself, I won't change jobs. I'm choosing not to change jobs. That might lead you to some clarity as to why you don't want to, why you're choosing not to change jobs. I won't find a partner. Why not? You might discover you simply don't want to make the effort, and that's fine if that's what you want. You Maybe you'll find out you have an unaware belief that you're not lovable or deserving of a great relationship. Or you might find that you have some healing to do from a previous relationship. So changing I can't to I won't get you back in your power. It's a fun game to play with because you don't don't take it seriously. Don't go, oh, I won't do that. Well, no, that's not right. That's not it exactly. No, play with it. Open your mind up to the possibility that you are at some level choosing not to. That can't means you're choosing not to. Won't is you're really choosing not to. You're claiming your power and you're deciding, I'm not going to do this. And if that's not accurate, then you use your power of choice to change it and go in a different direction. It's a fun one to play with and it can be really, I suggest playing it with something that's uh, not too important to start with, okay? You know, um, for me, I can't eat Brussels sprouts. Okay, ew. Okay, so I can't eat Brussels sprouts is I won't eat Brussels sprouts. I don't want to, I'm not going to. But when I recognize this, I actually tried some Brussels sprouts last week. Isn't that strange? And eh, they were okay. I won't eat them again, but it was okay. So we have those choices, big things, little things. Play with it, it's fun. Now another phrase I mentioned earlier is the have to. When you recognize you're using have to, I have to do this, I have to do that. Explore how you feel, what is your truth? This leads you to a new choice. Now you recognize what I'm doing here tonight is we're talking about the power of choice and how we can use it. But the power of choice has led us into all sorts of things that might be blocking us from getting to our dreams and goals. Okay, so as we become more aware of what's going on in our heads, what's happening, we can change those and we change those things. We make different choices, opens us up, opens our energy up to that limitless thinking and that limitless living that we want to move into. So here's an example of the have to. I have to be there for everyone else. So is this true? I've heard this a lot from a lot of my clients. I have to be there for them. I have to drop everything and go and help them with this. I have to, whatever it is. Is this true? So in exploring, our thoughts might be, if I say, no, I can't help them because I'm too tired or I have other things to do, what will they think? They won't like me anymore. I'll be hurting their feelings. I'll be letting them down. I'll be disappointing them. Okay. Or another excuse would be, if I don't go and help them um, be there for them all the time, that I'm a horrible person, so we've moved into self-judgment. Is the truth, then we start questioning, what is the truth here? Is the truth that you feel obligated to help, but your heart really isn't in it and you really just don't want to do it? Is the truth that you need self-care and you don't have to be there? for them at all times? Is your truth that you become such a people pleaser that you have no idea what you really want and the only reason you're doing it is so that the other person is not disappointed in you or that they're upset or something and you're trying to keep things smooth, you know, being that people pleaser thing? Is your truth that you'll suffer from your own judgment? So when you start, when you catch yourself saying have to, I have to do this, I have to do that, if it sets off a little bell in your head, stop and pause for a second and go, wait a minute, do I have to? Is this true? Ask yourself that question. Is it true? Is this really the choice I want to be making? I've talked to many parents over the years who have done a great job of raising their kids to the point that they may have done a little too much for their kids. So as the kids get older, they expect the parent to keep doing everything for them. And then eventually the mother, it's usually the mother, comes to the awareness of, wait a minute, you know, I'm not really doing them much of a service if I'm taking care of everything for them. They need to take 
responsibility for their own actions as well. And so the mother kind of backs off and then the kids get upset. Well, you always helped me before. You have to help me. You've always helped me in the past. And the mother will start the guilt thing. Oh, I've always helped them. If I let them down, you know, this is this is bad. And so then they end up giving in because their kids are upset. I've talked to many parents who have gone down this path. So it's important to recognize that if you start changing your behaviors and not have to wing for every other, everybody else, that you might have a little pushback from people, but that's okay. Because what is your choice? Is your choice for self-care? It might be. Is your choice that you need to do something for you? Is your choice that you really think they need to do it themselves and you don't want to? Maybe you just simply don't want to. So pay attention to the have to's. So when you discover your truth with the have-tos, you can then make a more accurate choice about what you really want to do. What is your truth? So you can use your words to become more aware of your truth. So pay attention to those limiting words like I can't or I have to. This awareness leads you to new choices, ones that will get you much closer to your ideal life. And then the fourth idea I want to talk about is something I mentioned a little bit earlier, but I'm going to go into it a little bit deeper, is to decide what your ideal life is. Since we obviously cannot be intentional with 35,000 choices and decisions, what is most important to you? What do you want? Do you want to be happier? Maybe it's simply that you want to be happier. Maybe you want to lose weight. Maybe you want a different job. Maybe you want to quit your job. Maybe you want to expand your spiritual growth. Maybe you have a goal in mind. Maybe you want to become a medium. Maybe you want to start a new business. Maybe you want to become an artist, whatever it might be. So think about this, what your ideal life would look like. And then what choices can you make to lead you in that direction? So when I was writing my book, I finally decided it was going to be a priority. I was going to make this a priority. And if I wanted to prioritize that, I needed to make sure I was using my time in a way that would get me to finish the book and work toward the book. I had to choose to reprioritize how I was spending my time. When I was doing this, I know that my best writing time is in the morning, so it had to be first thing, which meant everything else had to wait. No emails, no nothing else. As I was writing, also I had paper everywhere. You should have seen this room. There was paper on my desk, on the floor, crumpled paper, written paper, scraps of paper, files, all sorts of things around. I didn't take the time to pick it up because that wasn't important. It wasn't my priority. So when we decide what we want as we're moving forward, what our ideal life is, that's how we're going to narrow down our choices and prioritize using that power of choice to move in the direction we want to go. So if you want to lose weight, then obviously we all know that better food of choices is essential, right? So when you're thinking about your ideal life, what does that look like? How would you feel? What would you be doing? How could you use your power of choice to prioritize this? So as we're talking about this and the power of choice, you know, we do make choices all the time, as, as we discussed, 35,000 apparently in a day. So we make a lot of choices. But if you want to create your most amazing, wonderful life, then we need to figure out a way to move forward in that way. Once you've figured this out, what your goal is, and it doesn't mean you have to have only one goal, you can have two goals or whatever, it's your life, you do whatever you want. And then you start working with making intentional choices, you can create this ideal life. You'll get out of feeling stuck, where you're stuck in emotions, you're stuck in the I can't, you're stuck in feeling limited that you you can't create whatever it is you want to recreate. So remember, I'm going to go back through the things I already talked about. So you want to believe that you can have that limitless life. You want to believe you can have it. It's so important that we open our minds up to that idea that we can have this limitless night life. The next thing is to become aware of the choices we're already making. You know, if we're feeling badly worrying and complaining, at some level we're choosing this. This does not mean, and I'm going to repeat it again, as I always do, if something happens in your life and you're upset about, feel the emotions. Definitely feel the emotions. 
But if you start noticing you're stuck there, that's what we're talking about a lot tonight, okay? So we want to choose to reclaim some self-responsibility. Same thing, responsibility for creating that life. Nobody else is going to create that life for you. Nobody else is going to say, hey, do this, do this, do this. You might get guidance from people. That's an absolute. You might get guidance. You might some, have some intuitive moments where all of a sudden you have a great idea and you go, oh, that's the direction I need to go in. Okay. But as you're choosing to be self-responsible, you're getting back into your power. When you get back into your power, you're living from your soul's expression. And the soul's expression is part of the limitless abundance of the divine energy. So as you're responsible, you're strengthening your power and connecting even stronger to that limitless abundance that is available for everyone. So become aware of your words. I can't. I have to. Let them show you what limiting beliefs have been blocking your power of choice. Become aware of your truth. The words will help you become aware of your truth and what you really want. You want to be intentional with your choices as you move forward and your words can help get you there. Then when you move toward your ideal life, it's so much easier if you have clarity. I don't know about you guys, but my mind lately has been having about five million ideas and thoughts and everything going on in there. I'm working on too many projects at once as usual and I'm trying to narrow things down and with the energies of the world that I talked about a little bit last week um, and the darkness there and everything is just on edge and there's so much uncertainty out there it seems that so many of us need to really kind of clarify what is most important in our lives what is it that we really want and then being willing to take that action to move toward it and because of everything that's going Going on it's it's all about simplifying our lives and you know how sometimes we get really busy and we feel like we don't have enough time don't have enough time don't have enough time if we start saying that that'll be an intention one of these weeks I have more than enough time but if we start saying this over and over I don't have enough time then that's what we're creating more of but if you start to simplify your life and get rid of some of the things that maybe aren't as important anymore you'll find that it's much easier to use that power of choice to create the life you want to have and there, that is what I wanted to talk about tonight. I'm going back to check on the comments. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I don't see any questions in here. So if you have any questions, now is the time because I have said everything I was going to say. Isn't that amazing? I didn't go on and on and on for 50 minutes this week um, or more. So definitely think about some of the things I've thought about and maybe this will help you move toward your dream life the goal you want to have where you don't feel limited and stuck and remember you can connect with me on my website ColleenVanderZyden.com and you can also connect with me on Facebook right here Colleen VanderZyden medium and intuitive life coach and if you are thinking about wanting some coaching if you've ever thought about getting coaching the courageously used small group coaching program is the program to do the price is amazing given um given how much you get out of it it's eight weeks eight zoom things and we have so much fun and everybody gets personalized and group coaching and it is definitely um it's so transformative beyond what I thought it was going to be when I first started it. So if you're thinking about doing it, check it out on my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com. The link is right at the top. I do have a payment plan um, in there as well, and you can pay on in full, whatever you want. It's not too much money, I guess. Um, and if you pay uh, by December 1st, you get a free coaching session, and you also get a lower price. Uh, so there you go. So uh, no, thank you guys. I'm I'm glad I was clear, and it was good advice. I, you know me. I try to be clear. <laughs> I want to be clear. So uh, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And if you have further questions, you can continue to write on here, and I can respond to them later. And um, I can't remember what I was going to talk about last, next week. Well, I had a thought, but it went out of my head already. But I'll let you know when I figure it out. It's a big Eerie Philharmonic week for this week. We're playing Beethoven 9 in Erie, Pennsylvania this week, so I'm going to be a little busy playing my violin. Um, but I had a good idea for next week. I'll let you know what it is when I get back to it. So you guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you. Um, yes, Erica, look at that. I almost got there. I do do individual coaching. You can find that on my website as well. Um, and I choose to incorporate your ideas. Thank you, Marianne. That's a good one. Woo. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? I, it's simple, but in some ways not. 
So you guys have a wonderful week and definitely uh, ask questions and contact me if you have further comments or thoughts or ideas. Have a wonderful time. Bye.